The Theory of Political Economy by William Stanley Jevons Chapter 4 Theory of Exchange Part 22 Numerical Determination of the Laws of Utility The future progress of economics as a strict science must greatly depend upon our acquiring more accurate notions of the variable quantities concerned in the theory. We cannot really tell the effect of any change in trade or manufacture until we can with some approach to truth express the laws of the variation of utility numerically. To do this, we need accurate statistics of the quantities of commodities purchased by the whole population at various prices. The price of a commodity is the only test we have of the utility of the commodity to the purchaser. And if we could tell exactly how much people reduce their consumption of each important article when the price rises, we could determine at least approximately the variation of the final degree of utility, the all-important element in economics. In such calculations, we may, at first, make use of the simpler equation given on page 113. For the first approximation, we may assume that the general utility of a person's income is not affected by the changes of price of the commodity, so that if, in the equation, phi x equals m psi c, we may have many different corresponding values for x and m, we may treat psi c, the utility of money, as a constant, and determine the general character of the function phi x, the final degree of utility. This function would doubtless be a purely empirical one, a mere aggregate of the terms devised so that their sum shall vary in accordance with statistical facts. The subject is too complex to allow of our expecting any simple precise law like that of gravity nor when we have got the laws we shall be able to give any exact explanation of them. It will be of the same character as an empirical formula, used in many of the physical sciences, mere aggregates of mathematical symbols intended to replace a tabular statement. Nevertheless, their determination will render economics a science as exact as many of the physical sciences. As exact, for instance, as meteorology is likely to be a very long time to come. The method of determining the function of utility explained above will hardly apply, however, to the main elements of expenditure. The price of bread, for instance, cannot be properly bought under the equation in question, because when the price of bread rises much, the resources of poor persons are strained, money becomes scarcer with them, and psi c, the utility of money, rises. The natural result is the lessening of expenditure in other directions. That is to say, all the wants of a poor person are supplied to a less degree of satisfaction when food is dear than when it is cheap. When in the long course of scientific progress a sufficient supply of suitable statistics has been at length obtained, it will become a mathematical problem of no great difficulty how to disentangle the functions expressing the degrees of utility of various commodities. One of the first steps, no doubt, will be to ascertain what proportion of the expenditure of poor people goes to provide food at various prices of that food. But great difficulty is thrown in the way of all such inquiries by the vast differences in the condition of persons, and still greater difficulties are created by the complicated ways in which one commodity replaces or serves instead of another.